Okay, hello. Um, my name is Robert, and today I am going to fix a little bit of a snag. In my recent project, I'm making a, uh, what you call a um, rectangular dishcloth, or rectangular washcloth, and I have a little bit of a problem where the needles, let's say, slipped out by accident. Um, these are high, high needles. They don't usually slip out, but I made a mistake, and therefore I needed to take my needles out of the whole project. Most people would panic and be like, oh, crud, I gotta unravel the whole thing. And as you can tell, I didn't unravel out my mistake. So my mistake was a little bit too far down to correct using any other means, such as a crochet hook that has a um, knitting needle at one end. This here is a knitting needle type slide. Um, also, you could be used for cable knitting. And this side is a crochet hook. As you can pretty much see, there's a crochet hook there. Um, this here is from Susan Bates. And it's made in Mexico. You can make your own if you want of that. You know, to, I would suggest using like a plastic one, like filing down one end, but it doesn't really matter. Um, all right, so in this here case, you can use to um, basically what you need to do is like thread in another um, cord of some kind or another thing. Um, you can use something like a regular embroidery needle you know, such as this here, one here, um, or you can use, uh, I forgot the name of these, but these here are basically what I use whenever I go to, um, weave in my tails because it gives the, the thread, the whole length of this here needle to basically slide against and therefore you can easily weave in very, very short tails into your work. Now, technically, I would be going through that there method. However, in this case, I'm not. Because in this case, it's actually going to be easier to pick them up if I take and use a smaller needle. And, in this case, um, since I'm already using Haya Haya items, I'm going to use my Haya Hayas. But I'm going to use my Haya Haya number twos, which are very tiny needles. I'm only going to use one in a cable and a stopper, which is going to be why I'm going to basically use for correcting this here issue. However, note that this here will lightly change your gauge, but you're going to make up for the change in gauge because as you're knitting and, and you make a mistake like this, odds are your gauge is already going to be impacted. So you're going to have to basically tighten up your next row once you, you know, fix the issue and you knit it. And I'm sorry, I didn't have all this here out to start with, but it's not going to take a bit. Um, all right, so this here part, uh, I got my little ball end cap. I'm just going to ground no need to tighten it up tight it's not going to be that useful especially since I'm using one of my longest cables you can use a shorter cable it doesn't really matter so long as the whole other work can fit on it this here I'm gonna screw it in as far as it'll go then I'm gonna take the key and one of the pads grab the grab the needle with the pad and then Use the key and just spin it and tighten up the cord. And because this here is Haya Haya, this cord actually spins inside of its anchor point, its ferrule or ferrule. Okay, I want to make sure that is tight, but not so tight that I rethread the screw. Okay, put that off to the side, grab my work, 
And technically, it's usually better to start at the end with the yarn at, but in this case, I'm going to start at the end that doesn't have the yarn, so that when I get to the point where the yarn is at, I'll be able to fix the problem and, and just start knitting. So what I want to do here is I want to pull this here up, and because this was a yarn over, I need to pull up another segment of yarn, therefore keeping it up like that, and good grief butterfingers today um in order to make sure that stays where it is i'm just going to use a simple uh what should you call it loop holder or stitch holder and basically use that go through these and then go down to that and then just anchor it for now because i don't want that coming unravel okay now let's go over here to this end Remember this here, remember your pattern whenever you're trying to fix a problem. Your pattern is going to be basically how you're going to pick up everything. Um, this here, outer stitch, is my edge stitch. You know, it's always going to be a knit and it's going to be a twisted stitch. So I need to make sure there's a twist in it, which it is. I need to pick it up in the direction of the twist. This here, I want my leading leg to always be on the right side. So I'm going to peek this here like this. I'm going to peek up my yarn over so that the leading leg of the yarn over is on the right side. I think I can zoom in a little bit. See, it's on the right side. And then I'm going to peek up my next stitch so that its leading leg is going to be on the right side of my work. As in... When, if I was going to be knitting this direction, this is how I'm going to be taking them in. Just continue to do that for all of your stitches that you dropped off your hook. Now note, there are some that are ambiguous. Like this here, it looks like it could go either direction. So you take it, you pull it up so that you can see which direction it goes. Make sure you don't pull it up so much that you mess up the following stitch. Once you see where the this here loop that's on your needle goes into that one, then you want to go in in between that. So that puts this the part that, that was leading to this here stitch is actually the front part of your uh, of your loop. So you want it to go onto your needle facing you. And the other one be away from you. And usually, whenever you do that, it automatically corrects everything else. So that there's at least a bunch that will be in the right order to pick them up with. And just need to continue on to this until you get to the end. In the future, I plan on releasing videos about how to correct other mistakes in your knitting, as well as about how to do lever knitting, well, my style of continental lever knitting, and how to do other other um, things as well. So, uh, I usually prefer to do dish cloths, but I'm also going to be looking into doing um, I'm also going to be looking into doing um, things like vests and sweaters. Okay, this here one is starting to sink down, so I need to pull it up. But because the next one is also sinking down, I'm going to put my needle in it and pull it up, even though I just split the yarn itself. That way I could grab it before it went all the way through and caused me even more hassle. Everything in knitting is fixable. Remember that. Everything in knitting is fixable. You just have to be willing to work with it in order to fix it. Okay, and this here is the last stitch I need. Okay, so I now have all my stitches back on a needle. 
Now, no, this here needle is not one that I'm going to be using beyond this here point. Once, let's see, I have too long of a cable. That's the problem with using, with using a cable you don't need. Alright, now I'm going to go back over to my actual needles and remember the pattern so that you don't repeat your same flaw as you just did. So I need to pull this here loop off because that was not part of my pattern. My pattern called for the yarn to be in the front whenever uh, I got to the end and it wasn't. So I need to put that yarn in the front. Now this here, I need to knit through the back loop. And as I do, I need to make sure I tighten up a bit. So when I pull it off, now I'm tightening up around that. This here's the reason why we use a very tiny needle to hold everything because we need to re-correct our tension. Now the next part of the pattern was to knit two together. So I'm going to knit two together. That there pulled our, um, our yarn over like it's supposed to be. Now we need to do a yarn over and now we need to knit two more together and pull it tight. No, you don't want to pull it so tight that it's impossible for the needle to go in. Just want to be where it's pretty much consistent. Okay, now the rest of this, we can loosen our grip on this here needle over here and just knit like we should, which is basically knit all the way to the end. This here in a pattern is a very simple garter stitch washcloth. Um, just don't make any other mistakes. That would be better. <laughs> I'm about to knit in the wrong loop, which is a bad thing for when I redo a pattern. Now, I'm maintaining a tight tension so that whenever I get ready to come back across, my tension should look like the rows underneath this row. Not look like, oh, you made a mistake. So, you got all these here air gaps like that there. You don't want air gaps like that in your finished project unless it's lace. Then you may want it. What you want your finished project to do is be a somewhat dense of a fabric. You know, it'll have holes, yes. All fabric's going to have holes. Even this shirt I got on has holes in it. You can put it up to the light and see light come through. But... The way the knit, knit stitches, the way the weave of the pattern is, it helps to compensate for those holes so that you don't see them all that well. Okay, anyway, back to fixing my problem. Okay, I'm going to pull this here off and slide. Uh, I guess I could demonstrate a little bit of my, um, of my, what should I call it? Uh, my version of lever knitting. Lever knitting was usually done with longer needles. And you can also do it with um, circulars. But really, all it is, is you either hold it like this here, like a pencil, or you hold a needle where it's straight and, uh, and all, and it doesn't move. What you're going to do is you're going to grab, go in, wrap it around with a yarn, and then pull the yarn through and slide off. If you're going to do a knit stitch, you're going to go in underneath the non-working needle, go up over the non-working needle, and then slide that needle all the way to the edge of the non-working needle and slide off the stitch. If you're going to do a purl, you're going to basically start at the top, go in over the non-working needle, wrap around, go to the bottom, and slide off. Okay, so I don't need a purl on this here pattern. It's all knit. I'll show that in better detail in a future video. Um, this video is mostly just to show how to pick up stitches and continue on with the project that you have already created a flaw in. And I don't want this here video to get too long and boring. Okay, so I'm going to continue all the way to the end and stuff. Now, whenever you're doing lever knitting, your, your non-working needle usually does all the work and stuff to pull everything off. But in this case, I'm having to use a 
use my finger and help pull it because I'm trying to keep like almost a death grip on my tension just so I don't have a, a row that is very noticeable of having had a bad flaw. Um, once we go back through and stuff, you will see that it will, that it's basically going to look just like the row bef before it. And another thing, if you use Haya Haya, you already know that pressing on the tip of the needle is a bad thing. Pressing on that tip is like giving yourself a shot every time you do it. So try not to do it too much. Just saying. <laughs> it does hurt after a bit. <laughs> I mean, really hurt. Okay, so I'm to this here point. Now I can do this here. Knit this here. And just split the yarn, which I can easily correct. I'm going to knit this here um, to my last stitch, bring the yarn to the front, rotate that last stitch around to twist it, and boom. The reason I'm twisting it is because, uh, as you'll see in future projects of mine, whenever, hang on, my yarn's got all twisted over here. Um, in future projects of mine, um, I'll show you the reason exactly for it. But it was something that my mom taught to me. Um, it basically gives you this here braided pattern all the way across the end. As if you did long tail cast on to and, uh, and a knitted um, bind off. Whenever you do your bind off and your cast on, you'll always have a nice braided edge. But as you're going through your work, you won't usually always have that nice braided edge. So in order to do this here, you add basically two additional stitches, or in my case, you just use what stitches you have. And you take and bring the yarn to the front, then you twist the stitch, and then you knit the next stitch through the back loop. So one, right now, this here stitch, I haven't worked this stitch yet. So we're still on our previous row. If we were using a row counter, it should still say we're on row, 10 or whatever row we're on, okay? So, through this here back loop, we're gonna go in, we're gonna pick up our yarn and pull it through. It won't have pretty much any tension or anything on it. You're gonna have to snug it down using your finger and like pull on it some, but don't try to snug it too much because you'll want it to, you'll want the edge stitch to be somewhat loose so that It'll allow the fabric to bend unless you're trying to do something where you don't need it to bend. Okay, so we did we did a knit stitch right after we did that on knit through the back loop. Now I did my yarn over, go underneath and wrap around the needle. Now I'm gonna do another knit stitch. And then I'm gonna jumble these here stitches together and as you can see they're holding their tension they're holding on to the needle properly they're not overly tight or anything that lets us know that we did our previous part good now we're going to go in split a stitch and do our knits and stuff just like usual i'm going to speed up a little bit so that you can see that as we're we're redoing our row. Everything is coming off properly and, you know, nice gaps. And everything is doing the garter stitch like it's supposed to. Jumble up our, you know, yarn like we're supposed to. And just keep going. Ultimately, in the end, what we're doing is we're just doing knits knits all the way down and then uh you know bring the yarn to the front twist the stitch knit through the back loop that's pretty much all this here pattern calls for on this here row here on the next row you is basically a knit one knit two together yarn over knit two together and then knit to the end and repeat that twisting of the back stitch the last stitch uh, with the yarn in the front.
some of these here we got a little tighter than we should so as we're coming back through I'm loosening them but as you can tell I kind of got that air part right there a little too loose so how can I fix that tug on the rest of the, the stitches and then stretch the stitches out and then tug on them again that usually helps to compress the stitches properly and if that doesn't work, then when you come back through the next time, by your third time through, once you have have completed all of the all of the knits and stuff for one row, and you've done it for three or four times, the tension will be back to being uniform. And I don't understand why that occurs, but it usually occurs and you usually can see it when you're working with cotton and acrylic base yarns. I have not yet worked with bamboo or um, tinsel um, with my uh, knit needles, but they should also have the same, same aspect. And as far as wool, I'm allergic to wool, so I do not touch it. I learned that whenever I went to a craft store and touched some wool, and the wool was um, fisherman something. Anyway, when I touched it, I let my fingers on fire, and it took a good two days before my fingers started to feel bad like they were supposed to feel. <laughs> so, I am not touching wool. Um, this here... As you can see, the tension is somewhat uniform with the previous rows. There are a few little, you know, gaps, but that will get solved with our next round through. And as you can also see, the way the, the tension is, is basically about the way the gap in between these here, I should be able to put my needle in. And whenever I go up here to the top, no, not where the needle's currently at, but like here where the cable is, I can put my needle into the gap and it fits into the gap properly. Uh, so therefore, everything should be fitting perfectly. Uh, all right, as far as how we can continue with this, well, in this pattern, like I said, it's knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, and then knit all the way to the end. I'm not going to do that, but if I did, you would see that this here is going to continue just like the rest of this, and it will be a nice dense fabric, so that ultimately, whenever I go to block it out and, you know, stretch it out so it can dry and tint stuff and stuff, it will be uniform from you know, the end that we're, we're going to end with through our mistake and all the way to the end on this side. Now, as you can tell, the yarn is pretty dense. You know, for garter stitch, it's dense. It's not super airy. It's not like, you know, stretch it open and see all the holes. It bounces back closed properly. It's airy airy enough to be airy but dense enough and oh to be good and if you're curious about what yarn I'm using I prefer Lime Brands 24-7 cotton uh, no I am not paid for or sponsored by Lime Brand maybe that'll change eventually but I do love their cotton yarn uh, I have done other projects with it, and so far, I haven't had much of an issue with it, and therefore, you know, in the future, the projects I'm going to be doing will probably be with it, or with some other companies' uh, cotton yarn, but right now, I mostly use Lion Burns. Thank you. Um, and like with all videos on YouTube... If you like this or video, leave a like, a comment. Also, if you um, have any suggestions about projects or um, courses, let me know the, um, in the comment section, as well as um, any constructive criticism. Um, 
As far as the needles are concerned, I'm probably going to be going over to using Chiagu or Chiagu, however you say it. Um, as I've used Haya Haya in pricking my fingers, it is something that I'm not too fond of. It hurts big time. Um, so, yeah. At some point in the future, I may attempt to use um, Portuguese knitting. This is a heart that my mom brought for me. Um, I prefer, you know, heart-shaped things, as you can tell. Um, but the, this here heart is made for Portuguese knitting, so as you can use two colors. And one, one side holds one color, one side holds the other color, and you tension it around your neck like this here, and as it tugs, and you can gauge your tension that way. I don't use Portuguese knitting. <laughs> it's not my go-to knitting, but I have been experimenting with it, and until I get better, I won't be uh, showing it on YouTube yet, but once I get better at it, I will probably go over to using it full-time. But anyway, as far as this here is concerned, this here is just a simple, you know, rectangular dishcloth. And I'll be finishing this here project up in maybe a few hours to another day. And once it's finished, it should be about a foot long. And then we'll start another project and I'll probably be posting another video then. Alright, thank you, and like I said, leave a comment, like, subscribe, and I will be releasing more videos in the future, including a how-to for Continental Lever, as well as um, how-to to do basic dishcloths and basic towels, even um, demonstrating a pattern I designed myself recently that produced a big massive towel that also made a smaller dishcloth uh, with out of. So be looking forward to that and I will see you another time. Thank you.